to Next University Schools in Session! I'm super excited to come back to class today. Even though I miss Jivan and Janelle, I'm actually super excited to meet my new classmates, Daisy and Brightman. And don't tell the J&J &J this, but I actually think I'll prefer the new classmates. The most surprising thing I've learned about myself is that I'm here for every class. We've had students come and go, but look at Daisy and Brightman, I'm so happy to welcome them into the next university. We have our professor here today, but he doesn't really look like a professor. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. It's like, you are probably thinking, like, is this guy for real? Yeah, by profession, I'm a criminal defense lawyer, but I know um, what you're thinking. I look more like a criminal. So, yeah, you might be half right, you know. So, yeah. Do you wear a man bun in court? Oh, I do, I do. Actually, oh. uh, I think the whole idea is that you just need to look professional, neat and tidy. Mm. So you want to wear your earrings, you know. Of course, I don't show my tattoos, like, you got to wear a long sleeve shirt, you know, cover it up. You know, yeah, but, yeah, man bun. I was expecting a suit and tie, I was expecting like a clipboard, a little pen, maybe a laser pointer. Man just walked in with sunglasses on his head and a man bun and I'm like, okay, now I'm the one taking notes. Is that okay. harassment? Sorry. <laughs> Boys and girls, today we are going to talk about sexual harassment. Ooh. My new reaction from here. Oh, oh. Like sexual harassment. It's very serious. I feel like every like every person would have experienced sexual harassment in one way or another in yep. their lifetime. Maybe first and foremost, I would just say that I think uh, the umbrella uh, topic is really harassment. So sexual harassment is really a sub branch of that. So since today's topic is on sexual harassment, we will just zoom in mm -hmm. on this sub branch. And I think for starters, right, uh, the, the common or rather the easy understanding uh, for sexual harassment is this. Huh? It is not expressly legislated in Singapore law. Alright, like I said earlier on, the umbrella caption, the one that's legislated is really harassment as a whole. But there are different manners and different forms of harassment. So one of which is sexual harassment. So I think for sexual harassment, you just need to uh, understand that there are four limbs. So I think easily we can classify them into physical, non-physical, verbal, and non-verbal. So when we talk about physical sexual harassment, we are talking about uh, molestation, or in law, uh, we, we call it outrage or modesty. All right? And then of course we have a stalking, unlawful stalking. Then after of course we have the more really the aggregated ones, uh, clear-cut criminal offenses like rape. Uh, you know, sexual assault and penetration. Now we go into the second part, non-physical. What are some examples of non-physical sexual harassment? Oh, like cat calling. Oh yeah. Right. Well, non-physical the examples that I have would be voyeurism. Mm -hmm. So in short, we call it upskirt, down shirt. You know? Oh. Right. So you take a camera, or you take a phone camera. You decided to take like, you know, uh, somebody sitting in a very suggestive. Uh, Posture. Another um, example will be uh, lewd gesturing, for example. Exactly like that and like that, you know. So this one? Yeah, yeah, well, this is old school. This is old school. Oh, this, old school. Yeah, this, is, yeah, this is probably like like, no. like Gen X. <laughs> I will not do it, but yeah. what was that? <laughs> when I go home today, I'm gonna show my mom this and I'll be like, my teacher teach me one. So now moving on to the third one, okay, verbal. So it applies both online and offline. So for example, right, you, you go into the office, you go to work one day, and, and your female colleague, I mean, she, she looks good, alright? So in, instead of complimenting her, saying that, hey, you look good today, you, you just go straight for the queue, you say, nice legs, you know, what time they open. <gasps> alright. Uh, <laughs> right, suggestive, uh, sexually suggestive, okay. provocative. Right. Alright, so that itself can be a form of uh, verbal sexual harassment. The last one will be non-verbal. So non-verbal sexual harassment. Taking pictures. Exactly. Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. well, of course, there are other more specific examples, but I think for today's uh, session, we'll just combine to the four big categories. Yeah. Alright. Problem with the criminal defense law is that I defend the bad guys. Yeah. Yeah, I've done. I've defended rapists, pedophiles, molesters, uh, sexual abusers. As a criminal defense lawyer, I get asked that question a lot, which is that how do you feel about defending bad people, right? Uh, well. I think really the takeaway is this. I defend them legally, but I do not stand with them morally. That, that's really it. It's, it's, it's really just like a doctor, you know. If you are sick, you see a doctor, and a doctor is just going to treat you and ask you what conditions you have, what symptoms, 
you know, they're going to treat you, right? So, so really, it's just targeted. You really deal with the problems. That's why they call us a professional. Always remember, no means no. All right? Rejection means rejection. GG means GG. Is it true when you're drunk, you can't give consent? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh. Yeah. Because mentally, you're intoxicated. Well, it depends on the, de the degree of the intoxication, but generally, as a good rule of thumb, you are not able to give consent. And consent must be expressed, it cannot be implied. Like, for example, uh, if you are partying with this girl, mm. alright, you guys are drinking, having a good time, and, and if, if you wanted to, to make out or you think that maybe the girl is suggesting something to you, and she was just nodding her head, right, it doesn't mean that she has given you consent, even though she might seem to suggest that. So that is what we call client consent. That is really not recognized in the law. It must be expressed. Yeah. It cannot be implied. Mm. Yeah. So what is one way that you can get an expressed consent? So do you ask for permission? Yeah, you just ask. I, I know it's a bit like, yeah, it's a cute joy, right? No, it's not. Yeah. I like it. Like I've, I can count on one hand how many people have actually asked me first, mm. um, which I've always really appreciated, whereas really it should be the norm. Mm -hmm. And But I'm also like, I don't, like thinking about it, I actually don't think I ask either. I think I do like just take the hints and take the, right. you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Which everyone does, but yeah, being asked I don't think is a killjoy. I think it's well, I think respectful it's and mature. Yeah, correct. I think that, that should be the right approach, yeah. but it's just that a, a lot of people, probably there's a lot of misconception out there thinking that, you know, just because you're suggestive, you know, uh, like you, like we are flirting and all that, I take that as a as yes. yes. Really so that shouldn't be the case. Yeah, yeah and, and like what Daisy said, you know, the correct approach is that you should really ask. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know, if you're confused, ask. So I didn't tell my classmates this, but actually in recent times, I've always incorporated asking for permission before I kiss someone, and it's always been a success. So it's not, it's not a, a, a thing to be like, you know, ah, it's, it's not cool. It actually worked. Consent is sexy! There we go! I think it's a total turn on when a guy asks you, are you sure you want to go ahead? Like, like, like let's go! <laughs> Any experience? I have a workplace one. Yeah, it's quite recent. And it wasn't physical harassment, but it was definitely... Um, like, he, was, he made a lot of comments um, about my body. And then it started being on messages as well. And I knew immediately, like, this is not, like, I feel uncomfortable. I don't care what his intentions are. It's not, it's not happening. Um, so I reached out to my, my boss um, and they like had a conversation with him. I wasn't privy to what was said or how it was addressed, um, but it didn't work because he continued to do it. So I brought it up with him directly. I said, look, I've already gone to, they've already talked to you about this. Now I'm saying no, like, let's just stop. But he's still working there. No. Okay. Oh. So he's gone. All right. Yeah. But do you feel glad that you brought it up and you spoke up? About yes. It? I think it was really empowering because I, I mean, I've never been harassed in that way. I mean, and it, I knew what was happening. I knew what I could do, um, and I knew it was wrong. You take the public transport, especially right yeah. when I was maybe like twelve or thirteen. So I was sitting next to this like guy, and he he put two fingers like under my back. <gasps> Yeah, and I was 12 or 13 years old. <coughs> and I didn't know, I didn't realize that was sexual harassment because nobody taught me, right? Yeah. So I just sat there like, this is kind of weird. Mm. And I got up, you know, um, to move to another seat because I felt a bit uncomfortable. And this auntie, she came up to me and she was like, girl, you get off this tree at the next stop and you don't come back and you take the next tree. I was like, okay, I didn't know why, but I just got off. And then years later, when I'm like 18 or 19, I realized, shit, I got molested. So I feel like a lot of these I wouldn't say micro harassments, but they happen to us so much. Yeah. Right? And to guys as well, for sure. Yeah. So it's just going on a date with this girl and like okay, and I guess she's taken interest very clearly and everything. Suddenly she just how to say puts her body onto me constantly. You know how like some girls like to cross their arms, right. you know? It's quite sweet, but the way she does it is like she'll grab it and then my hands could clearly feel that it's in between her breast area. Yeah, she makes a lot of those uh, verbal comments as well, like, wow, if you're like, if you come home with me now, you, you're just gonna like, get it, I'm gonna so, give so hard and everything, and I'm like, okay, what? <laughs> I thought here we're just up to eat like McDonald's or something. But it's <laughs> like, all, all four different categories. Yeah, of yeah it's literally all, all one, it just didn't like, sink in until after the date, so I'm just like, yeah, I just, what the hell was I doing? Like, I should like, 
no, said something. No, because yeah, your body goes into shock when these things happen. Right? Yeah. Like you don't, like you said, you don't, it doesn't, until you're like away from it and you've like, it's actually settled in what you've done, like what's happened yeah. to you, then you think about it and then you say, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. but you uh, don't yeah. like have that guilt because you couldn't catch it. With I, it. I know people who have been through the exact same things and it's very common and it's, it's a shame that we all have that connection with each other. It's really lovely to be able to be in a space where we all feel safe to share um, and it's comfortable and supportive, which is very nice. You really should not bottle up all these kind of feelings or the feelings that you have been through going through such a situation. I feel like you should talk about it and it's great that you get to share it with people and um, hopefully that some of them might learn a thing or two on how to deal with it, Yeah, because it definitely helps in every way possible. I think the way that Brightman spoke up, honestly, you know, I was very inspired by it and it proves that you can protect yourself regardless of gender. So men, remember that. Oh, fun fact, uh, criminal law in Singapore, there's no time limitation. What that means is that, like for, for civil action, right, so there's a time limitation of six years. So for example, if you don't do anything, you do six years, right, then uh, you can't do anything after that. So, so if something happened to you, uh, like what you just mentioned, right, it can be like 10 or 20 years ago, the criminal law regime in Singapore is that it's, there's no limitation. There's a lot of misconception out there. Again, uh, one part I think is about the gender issue, like in schools, right? So uh, sometimes you engage in rough play, uh, boys on boys, girls on girls, you know. But I think a lot of people they they kept thinking that oh, it's only a, a, a guy on a girl situation. That's not true. Yeah. Like sometimes in boys' school, right? You know, sometimes they play rough, and then you just like pull down somebody else's shorts. You know, give them a slap on the butt, right? Guy on guy. But that itself, in the eyes of the law, is actually outrage on modesty. Yeah. So I think a session like this is good, so that the audience uh, can know what to do when they are ever found in such a situation. Can I give you an example of something that happened to me? Then can you tell me what I should have done? Okay. okay. I was sitting outside of school, right? right? And I was eating at a nearby coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And I was just eating, you know, my fishball noodles, and I see an uncle, and he keeps looking at me, right? He's reading a newspaper, he keeps looking at me. Then I realized that his pants are actually down and he's jerking off behind his newspaper while looking at me. And this is at a hawker center? At the coffee shop. What? But, but so if, if he did that and I videoed him mm -hmm. doing that as evidence, then am I the one that... No. No, okay. Because uh, I believe, okay, I, I think the law covers that as well. So for example, if you take a picture or you take a video of uh, something happening and then you post it online, or you said it with your friends, right? But I think the rationale of that action of yours is really to notify people yeah. of, of a dangerous situation or a reckless situation or a crime in action to, to be used by the police as evidence. That is entirely defensible. You are in the clear, you're not doing anything wrong. But coming to your, your scenario, right? I think if I'm you at that moment, right? I think really the first thing to do is to, uh, if you have a phone with you, just record. Yeah, take a video because that is evidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? That is evidence. Whether you put it online to warn others or is it to make a police report and turn it over as evidence to the police, I, I think that is really the first thing you should do. But what about like, revenge porn? Have you defended anybody who had distributed revenge porn? Oh, yes, I have. In fact, uh, when it comes to the topic of revenge porn, right, or what we call it uh, around the world in, in Singapore context as well, it, it is a, a fairly new legislation. It's really an expansion of the category of sexual offences in Singapore in the penal code. I remember a situation where my friend called me very like distraught and I was like what happened, what happened and he was like oh you know I'm in a situation whereby someone's threatening to release compromising photos. Yes. So like in cases like that is that also a criminal offence? Yes, very good question. Thank you for bringing that up. That is actually legislated. So it doesn't require the action uh, to be formed. Even the attempt uh, that means the very near threat of it constitute the offence. Whether it's harassment in general or specifically sexual harassment, it, it comes from the victim's point of view. All right? If you ever put a person in a state of harassment, distress or alarm, that itself can be actionable. All right? It could be a case of harassment or sexual harassment. What are some of the, the recourse that you can take if you are ever a victim of harassment or sexual harassment for that matter? Alright, so for me, I, I try to again put them into simple categories. You can choose to take offensive action or a defensive action. When something like that happens, the first thing that you need to do is to make a police report. If let's say it is a, a, a grey situation, alright, 
and, and for whatever reasons, the police said, okay, look, thank you for making the report. We are just going to give you a copy of that report, uh, but you can take action on your own. What does that mean? That branch out into part one and two. So either one, you have to decide, am I going to take an offensive approach? Or two, am I going to take a defensive approach? So the offensive part one, there is this recourse in our Singapore our criminal justice system. It's called the magistrate's complaint. You go in, you will see the judge. You explain to the judge, uh, this is what happened. Yeah. All right, and you take it from there. And then we come down to the second part, the defensive play. So if you decided to take a defensive approach, then that is where POHA comes in, all right? Protection from Harassment Act. So we have the bulk of the cases, people will be applying for a protection order, all right? So that, you know, they can protect themselves from further harassment because if the order is so passed, your would be harasser will be notified of this protection order granted by the courts. Mm -hmm. And if they continue to breach it, and that's where both criminal and civil action uh, can be taken against that. So Brightman was my table mate, and I couldn't help but notice every time I picked up my pen to write a note, he would pick up his pen to write as well. So I'm not sure if he's trying to copy me or, you know, he's just a little cheater trying to like peek at my papers, but maybe have your own ideas, Brightman. I am a bad student after all. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? There were so many terms that I didn't know. Like, oh my god. Uh, okay, it makes me feel a bit dumb, but it's good that Josephus literally like schooled us literally on how to identify and also sort of like um, take notes on all the things. And yeah, Daisy, I did not copy your notes, okay? I wrote it on my own. Where does the line get drawn between you know, them wanting to flirt and then them maybe going into the realm of sexual harassment because to them it's like hey I'm just trying to talk to someone I'm trying to maybe shoot my shot I'm trying to like make a move right maybe yeah. I can just give you an example if, if you think that like this girl's really good looking just say I think, I think you're good looking and I, I, I'm attracted to you right if you say Ugh. no then you stop them right? okay wait, 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 yeah. so if, I, if someone says that mm. and then the person says I'm not comfortable with that does that in it, on its own already make it sexual harassment because she's not it's, it's an yeah. unwanted I, very good question. I think I think it stops them. It, then it doesn't because I think by the very wording of harassment, it means that there must be some sort of continuation. Yeah. Mm. Right? right. But if it is a one-off, I think it's entirely defensible because you can say that I tried to approach her, I commented on her, I complimented her, mm. and she said no, and, and it stops. Does it depend then on the intensity of like the statement made? So for example, exactly. yeah. Mm. So like when you say like oh no, the, like nice legs when they open, that's immediately. Oh yeah. One, one, off, one, one time uh, is enough. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Oh yeah. One thing right? I thought it's supposed to be like just sharing of knowledge and all that but end up uh, that Joe uh, asked me like legal questions you know later after this session I go back to office I'm gonna ask my office uh, to, to bail to him okay every hour uh, is chargeable at $900 okay that's my rate bill me more like bill you the viewer you learn so much right please pay now number is here uh. I'm going to send to, to Prof Joe yourself how can we actually like protect ourselves right like in a situation like this mm -hmm. If you feel harassed, you would make a police report? I, I think the whole idea is just to, to speak to somebody and seek help. Even if you do, do not want to take an aggressive approach by making a police report or taking some of the legal actions, but speak to somebody. Actually, after talking about everything today, actually I feel so much more relieved. I don't know how to explain it, but it feels good. You know, it feels good to get it out of the system. It feels good to listen to everyone, share their experiences. And the most important thing is that I understand now that this is a shared experience. And um, if, you know, so much can be learned from just a one hour conversation with just four people, imagine how much can be learned if everybody does this on a national level. I do hope that I never need to call our professor Josephus because he's a criminal defense lawyer and I hope I'm never a criminal, thank you. I've learned a few important things today. The thing that keeps recurring is make a police report, you know. If you can, if you are in a position to do so, that's going to be very important and that's going to go a long way. I have now been taught and given the better understanding of what sexual harassment is mm. to certain categories to better, how to say, be aware, mm. watch out for it or even better to disseminate this info to my friends so that you know they can make themselves aware as well and also take action if needed. Yeah. It's super important for you to talk to your friends about it because yes. what I realized is that you know when we use when we talked about sexual harassment we, are, we always used to be in the real world in real life but with social media and with the internet and everything like the game is always changing you know there's so many new things that can come up and the only way that you can you know, understand what is the best action to take that is timely is really by talking to friends who are really understand 
things that they are moving as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and you'll find that everyone will have a shared experience, mm -hmm. and that in itself already alleviates so much of like the you know the emotional and the the, the distress that can be put on you. Yeah. yeah. So as what they always say, a teacher is also a student. So I'm glad that I'm here. I'm able to share with uh, my fellow students. But likewise, from their experiences, I learn a lot as well. And really, thank them for sharing. Just don't keep it inside, okay? Just don't. Don't suffer in silence, really. You only live life once, and, and life is not very long, you know. So, live it right, live it happy, and live it free. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you, Josephus, for your time and for being our awesome professor today. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If there are any stories you're willing to share, I mean, everyone's here to support you. Um, and stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs>